Hi, my name is Richard Chave. Okay. Tell me about your place. I live here at 1212 Raymond Street, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a refurbishment. We tried to use good green principles, and we basically rebuilt the house, you know, in support of that. We did a bid process with architectural specs, and I think that's the right thing to do. Everything was specced so that if there had been a major problem, we could have taken that legally through legal. So, and since it, it was an extensive thing, you wanted something to base your planning on. So we, we felt the need for good, good architectural drawings from the get-go. We, we got them from a, a good young man. Well, we wanted the heat to be efficient, which in an old house is the first problem because there's no insulation. So clearly insulation was from the get-go without disturbing too many walls. We added a porch. We needed to get the insulation up to snuff. So we were concerned about um, outgassing and all that with the new modern foam ends. So we just used um, the shredded newsprint and tried to be thorough. Stone, stove basically with a large heat sink in it. It runs a long smoke path to, to utilize the, uh, um, the length of the smoke path. More efficiently heats the mass, which then re-radiates. And it's a pretty thing. Um, uh, we purchased a hybrid model that had a pizza oven on one side and a, a, a hearth on the other. So, so you use it for cooking? Yes, okay. cooking, design. We had to design basically the bottom part of the extension to accommodate it. Okay. And uh, it's working. We don't always use it. You know, you don't want to use it, fire up it, fire it up to make pizza in the summer because yeah. then you've got to live with that heat. Okay. But it gives us a flexibility. You know, we can use wood. We can use oil. We have solar panels here. Mm -hmm. I think in the future, of course, transportation and solar you know, just all just makes so much sense. You know, capital costs going in have to be balanced against your savings, and your savings is dependent on how you think the world is going to be in the future. So. You know, for me to bring a spreadsheet out and say I will enjoy this by that, this will pay for itself. No. Well, payback is two things. Payback is um, paying off the investment you made. That is a calculation and that relates to your wealth. The second part of payback is how do I deal with uncertainty? How do I value the lack of predictability and not being able to see the future. Clearly, if I saw the future, I could, anyone who could see the future could play the horses, yeah, right? And then you right. can maximize. But by, if you can't see the future and you know you can't see the future, right? You have to give, give a negative value to that and try to be safer. We enjoy the grounds and gardening from a, well, let's see how many different kinds of food grow here. The grape arbors are a key part of the um, um, whole system, because this is you know, heavily grape arbor here. But um, the thing about the grapes is they, they produce a lot. They allow us to give and to trade and to try to make wine and to fuss around. And in the future say everything needs to be radically relocalized we could be vintners or we could hire vintners or we could support vintners so that would be what this place was built to do i believe it clearly was yeah. it's a the grow solar five um kilowatt system and those people are happy to get their name around. The sales rep is Mark Bamba, he's a good guy. He's become a friend. He's a good young man who seems to be uh, 
you know, sales guys either sell for the money or they sell for the for the cause, and he clearly is selling for the cause. How do you go about determining who would do the installation? We, first of all, I'm a sales get rep, okay. so I have my attitudes about how sales repping should go. Mm -hmm. I, I like the process, right? So I. I instituted a formal process and I, I did outreach to the people who had advertised and I knew of. And I learned word of mouth of a third. So I sent a phone, one phone call to each. And it's not like I was stop watching the time back, but I wanted to see how I would how be many, treated. How many uh, entities did you reach out to? I reached out to uh, five entities okay. on the phone. I heard back eventually from four. Mm -hmm. you know, Bamba was here the next day. The way they were selling it, of course, at the time was all the, the green thing to do. There was not a cost model that made sense at all mm -hmm. okay. in any scenario. Okay. So they just spoke about what they wanted to speak about, which is the green thing. They needed a guy like Mark who was just such a total believer, right? But, and that was our thing, but we're, we're, uh, we're relatively unsure about the eventual drain that this mess behind us, you, you know, was going to cost. So okay. we waited, we pushed for cost models, and eventually we got them. And I think some of the ones we built, you know, were, they asked us if they could use. And when was this? What year was this? Um, well, uh, this 2005. And you know, now the, what was the price then, 78, yeah. now, of uh, the heating oil. Yeah. Um, now it's looking better. And the solar has been not a problem in terms, there's been no maintenance. I mean, there's, you know, I was worried about that, you know, because, you know, you have to get your oil thing cleaned every year, and the wood is, you know, just, you need chimney sweeps. Um, but this thing is just, it does, does sit, we run it three years, two years now, and, um, Two relatively non-brutal but high snowfall winters, and it's, it's been not a problem. I get up there and fuss with it, just because I, you know, I fuss with it. I get a snow rake and I rake the snow. Why did you choose growth going? Their rep was attentive. They, they were willing to work with me on cost models that hadn't been done. They believed in their product and then they believed in what they were doing. So that was it. In this situation, aesthetically, we didn't want to rack them to totally get the correct sun angle. Okay. But um, we wanted something that would mount flush and not look too, too odd. Okay. So it turns out we'd, that we didn't give up too much efficiency by doing that. It makes install cheaper. It makes the rack become almost trivial because there isn't a rack, it's racked, but it's just sort of molded together. And um, again, the maintenance is you don't really have to unless you want to fuss with them, which I do. <laughs> the inverter does the DC to AC conversion, and those things are um, made to be replaceable. No, no, no. They are replaceable. And if they're cheap, well, now you can get thinking that way and right. replace them with smarter ones and more efficient ones. Yes.